<clears throat> okay, so hello everyone. And then today we're gonna cover about the chapter 20, which is the K means clustering. It this is also one of the interesting chapter that uh especially for me personally, this kind of a method is method is kind of like a commonly used and then uh used as a one of the emerging I would say machine learning technique that I'm used by in the my my field like urban planning. So I kind of very interesting to read this chapter. And then I, I have a little bit of knowledge before I looking at this chapter, I personally have a, a little bit prior prior knowledge about the K means clustering. So yeah, so I'm gonna explain the chapter 12, uh, uh 20 and then uh okay so let's start so as you can see here uh so far we actually discussed about the reducing the dimension of the feature space so what does that means what does this means is if we have a table like this here is the column right column one, column two, column three, et cetera, right? And then uh, there is a row one, row two, row three, blah, 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 right? This is the table, right? And then <clears throat> what the previous chapter has actually done is the how we can actually reduce the dimension of the features, which is this one. So these are the actually features, right? So how we can reduce the, these features is the main goal of the previous chapter. But right now, in from here to the next three chapters, like a K-means clustering is about the, how we can reduce uh reduce the dimension of the, this what is called the observation. So which means how we can group our observation and uh, how we can group the observation together like uh, into the some several uh, a few uh, a few independent group so how we can categorize them that's the main goal of the clustering and then uh k means clustering is actually kind of uh, what is called a super uh uh so i would say it, this one is actually super one of the supervised machine learning technique it is a supervised machine learning. Can you see the my my writing clearly? Yes, I can see it. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So what is the supervised machine learning means is uh, when you say about the K, K means actually says about the number of groups we want to clustering. Okay. And then um means means we actually uh clustering our observations based on mean of the center uh center in the in the cluster each cluster okay so whenever we act we actually try to make a uh, clustering to the some of the observation like this there is a there is a always center point like this okay so that's the this one is the what what we call the mean and then uh this one actually map represents about the centroid centroid over cluster and then based on the this centroid of the cluster, we actually calculating about the extent of the similarity. Okay. By uh based on the based on the distance. Distance measure. Okay. That's the how how clustering is about. So this is the just kind of a, I just tried to explain to you about the very, very basic scheme 
of the what the k means clustering is about. Okay. So is there any question so far? Anything? So actually, this one is a kind of a uh, one of the most commonly used method uh, for the in my field, and then uh, one of the main goal, another main goal for the, this clustering is as you can see here, is the high intra-class similarity, which means once once we have a cluster like this, among the observation, they actually very similar to each other, and then. Maybe, for example, there is another group of the cluster right here. Maybe between the cluster, actually, we have a low interclass similarity. So that means between the clusters, between the clusters, they are highly independent to one another. But within the cluster, observation should be very similar to one another. That's the our goal. How we can make a cluster to so that observation within the cluster is uh, similar to one another, uh, while the similarity between cluster is highly different and independent and separate to one another. That's the, our goal of the, this chapter. So this is the prerequisite. So these are the kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, packages we're gonna use especially for the factor extra is a kind of a good package for the visualizing the cluster result. And then we're gonna dive on that later in this section. And then we're gonna use the MNIST like a numbering data set and then a basket and also Amos housing data to for the clustering analysis. So at the beginning of the chapter, I actually explained about the uh, similarity is the measure identifying by using, by calculating the measurement, right? Mm -hmm. So in here, you says about the, there is actually required the sum of the method for the computing the distance. And then uh, this distance actually represents about the similarity and the metrics or metrics of the similarity. So there is actually a lot of approaches we can calculate into the, these distances. One of the most commonly used distance is the Euclidean and Manhattan distances. Euclidean distance is a kind of like this, like a, when we when you have a y and then a x, like a two dimensional function, and then a, we wanted to a is the x one comma y one, and b is x2 comma y2 and then we're gonna calculate about the this distance like a straight line distances between the two points that's the euclidean distances is a kind of a x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square and and some of the these two square and then we can do them that is the basic function of the this one is the euclidean distance. And then another thing we can do is the what is called the uh, uh, Manhattan distances, which is like this. This is the Manhattan distance, which is just kind of a sum of the simple distances between the two, two points. Okay. That's the what is called the Manhattan distances. And then this one is the Euclidean distance. Okay. T E and T M. Okay. And then uh, there is also another method called the correlation based distances, which is the more like uh, focusing on the correlation between the those two observations. And then uh, if they are correlated to one another, we can group them. And then uh, there's also called the uh, Gower distance me measurement, which we are gonna use when we have a uh, mixed of the data set, like a uh, mixed of the numeric and string and categorical and nominal or ordinary data set. In that case, we are gonna use the what is called the Gower uh, Gower, di uh, Gower distance uh, measurement. And also another thing is the cosine distances for the text mining things. Yeah. When you try to do the text mining, you can see that these kind of a cosine distances to 
to grouping, uh, grouping the number of terms based on the their frequency of the uh, frequency of the words uh, appeared in the each document. And then uh, those to calculate them, those similarity or those uh, correlations, we also used about the cosine distances based on the, to identify the similarity of the frequency of the word text between uh, between the word or phrases. So, so now our question is how we can decide a particular distance measure. Actually, there is a no straightforward answer, which means uh, it depends on, on about the, your quality of the data set and then uh, your data structure. So first thing is that you have to understand the data set first and then try to see about the when you make a decision to the conduct a clustering analysis, you have to think about the which distance is going to be the much better to represent the uh, similarity of the each among the observations to create the clusters. Okay. <laughs> And then in down here, it actually mentioned about the, some of the more detail about the distance measurement. In case of the Euclidean distances, actually very sensitive to the outlier. As you can see here, maybe if if there is a lot of observations, just kind of a clustering, like you can actually very good clustering all like this. That might be the very good way to using the clustering distances, but Maybe there is a outlier like here or, or here or here or here, maybe too too far from the those kind of a clustering that actually have a, a little bit issues like this. So in that case, this is a very sensitive to the outliers. Okay. And then and then in these cases, maybe you can use the, the other method, like uh, make a Manhattan or maybe go or go world distances, etc. We can touch for that later. And also, maybe if you can analyze in the mix of the unscaled the data set, maybe correlation based the distance is gonna be preferred. But the thing is, the problem is, as you can see in here, actually. Observation two and three is a very similar pattern, and then they they are very close, close the magnitude of the consumer behavior together. But the thing is, when we actually calculating the similarity by using the Euclidean distances, maybe observation one or two gonna be similar together because actually when you're looking at the observation one and two, their distance is much closer compare uh, closer than the observation observation three I mean yeah so in that case is uh actually correlation distance is also kind of a limitation about the when we're looking at the, this kind of a uh, analysis so so how you can define the similarity among the observations when you try to implementing uh, when you try to implement the conduct uh, clustering analysis is a uh, very critical. Okay, and then next step we can do is the how we can define the clusters. So that means, like a like a how we can uh try to try to define the cluster. That means we actually try to minimize about the within the cluster very uh, cluster within cluster variation is should be the minimum. So that means. When you're looking at the, this kind of a, cause uh, this one is actually Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance measurement for the similarity. In this case, some of the all of, some of all the, these kind of Euclidean distances from the centroid of the cluster. So we actually, our goal is, is how we can minimize this value, this W C K. So that's that is the kind of a good way to the defining to the cluster. Okay. So as you can see here, so at the bottom, so this one is the basic calculation about the clustering. And then our goal is the sum of the all of the these distance measurements should be the this one should be the minimize. Okay. That's the our goal. That actually 
give us about the very good quality of the clusters. And then we can actually understand the, what the characteristic of the cluster is about. Maybe we can, when you to define the cluster like this, and then the other, another step you can do is the, based on the, that kind of a clustering result, you can actually do the, what is called a multi-logic regression model. If you really wanted to do the, some of the optimizing characteristic about the, uh, each clusters. So that means whenever you have a cluster by using the that cluster outcome, you can use the that one as a multi-logic regression model and then that cluster is the multi-class multi uh, categorical uh, dependent variable. And then we can actually I understand the relationship between the independent variable and then that classification outcome, okay? So this one is a kind of like how you can see the see the clustering outcome is better. So as you can see here, the best position is uh observation is the highly cluster each uh cluster to get one another in the within the some boundary, and then uh when you can have a have a longest distance from the those cluster centroid that actually separates the uh, clusters apart, further apart, and then that's the best condition about the clustering, okay? But the thing is that there is also another situation about the geographic, uh, geometrically, geometrically, this kind of a complicated geometry gonna be happen, like uh, this kind of a spiral kind of a clustering. In these cases, as you can see here in the, in the figure B, in the figure, we can, it is very hard to clustering about the, uh, 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 how, how to clustering, it is very difficult to define the clusters. So in that case, there is actually other method about the spectral uh, clustering method based on the, this kind of a shape of the, uh, rather than the looking at the uh, clustering of the observations, that actually looking at the this shape and structure of the clustering uh, these observations structures, rather than the looking at the, their clustering pattern by itself. So there is also a different kind of method to uh, differentiate these clustering to the one another. In this one is I, I'm gonna cover about the chap uh, last chapter of this book, like a model based kind of a cluster, because uh, each cluster is gonna be defined as a model based kind of approaches, like uh, to to reflect uh, this kind of a shape, not the not the clustering by itself. Okay. And then next chapter we're gonna talk about is the, okay. So now we define the cluster and then now we know about the, how we can uh, uh, grouping the, this kind of a clustering, how we can definition of the cluster. So now we have a, how we can indicate the number of a case, like a, how we can define the, this kind of a number of clusters that gives us about the optimized group, uh, group categories. Okay, so that is a kind of a very tricky, and then uh, there is a kind of a uh, uh, no exact method about the how we can do this. Just the only thing we have to do is uh, just kind of a randomly selecting K for the first time, and then try to keep iterating, iterating this kind of a process, and then until we can get to the number of a cluster that actually minimize about the about the within cluster variations. Okay. So what is the big rule of thumb of in this case is the define the K with minimum SS, like a sum of the like a sum of the square within clusters. Okay. Like a within cluster outcome, okay? So, so define the K value with, uh, with the minimum, with the minimum 
sum of the square variation value within the cluster. Okay, that's the simple thing. And then a rule of thumb of the random start is the 10 to 12 in the normal data set. But the thing is this kind of a numbering is actually depending on, on about the data, data set size. If we have a very large data set, maybe it might be okay to set up the number of a clustering number about the 10, between 10 to 20. But if we have a very small data set size, it might be overfitting problem to the 10 to, if we can set up the number of cluster between 10 to 12. So it is a depending about the how, how many data set or how many observation we have, we can make a decision about the uh, uh, first initial number of the cluster that randomly selected by us. So this is the main reason why K means clustering is the supervised learning. So first we have to input the number of K, like a number of cluster. We have to randomly selecting the then, uh, uh, that K value. That K value actually comes from the, our prior knowledge or maybe some knowledge from the academic or some professional literature review. And then, or maybe we can just uh, setting up the as we as we own, or maybe there is another way we can do like a model based kind of a state case selections, which I'm gonna do that later in this section to optimize just kind of uh, focusing on the optimizing the clustering outcome. So this is the kind of a iteration. So we can keep randomly selecting the all of the kind of a clustering K and then as you can see here, step three and step four, we can actually calculating assign to the each closest the centroid and then keep updating the dead clustering centroid over time. And then I keep calculating about the dead similarity. Okay. Uh, actually mentioned that the K is sometimes a business convenience number like a number of store and center. Yeah, correct. In the business research, yeah, that might be also possible. Like, uh, like if we have a, for example, if we have a prior knowledge about the classification of the retails or business market, in that case, we can use the that uh, K value based on the, our prior knowledge. Or maybe if we don't know anything about the, anything about the, our prior knowledge. So that is actually means that the K is a highly unknown value. In that case, we can actually setting up the randomly selecting the K value, or maybe we can also <coughs> could, uh, also modeling those kind of a uh, uh, calculating those kind of a K value that allows us to get the optimized uh, number of a clustering with the minimize the that sum of the within cluster uh, variations. So Ricardo also mentioned that the cluster segmentation analysis is another application is a okay, means okay, yeah, got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe, for, for, maybe for, you for can example, explain, yeah. Yeah, you can explain yeah, those for, things. Yeah. Yeah, for, for for example, you have a you know you have a uh, a thousand uh, a thousand customers right and you have data on their purchasing uh purchasing history okay mm. so for example you have you have a, a sales o o over time uh, different products etc so mm. with k means what you can have is depending on the on the clusters right but you can have mm a certain pattern where you have customers that buy high high end products okay mm. high end products because they have that purchasing power then you have another cluster of customers that only buy in a certain mm -hmm. uh, period of time right mm -hmm. uh, black friday deals uh, 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 holiday sales etc then you have another segment of customers that they purchase only the low end. So what you can do is just try to analyze each of those, you know, 
customer uh, habits, purchasing habits, and then tailor your marketing campaign based on those habits. All right. Mm. So, for example, yeah, right. You want to maximize the purchasing of those customers as only activate when you are discounting your prices. Then you you have a a, a different marketing strategy that that you know uh you know in opposition with the ones that only buy high end products or low end products or even regional mm -hmm. sometimes in a regional depending on the season they will buy some products uh vis-a-vis -vis other products okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so uh k means is a good way and it's a very uh easily explainable to people that are non mm -hmm. you know technical you can easily explain that because yeah. you have you can visualize these clusters. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So you know, in a yeah. in a two dimensional uh, framework, you can visualize this cluster. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Okay. So thank you very much. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, this is a kind of a kind of a good way to the uh, do the current thing. So that means we can actually. Try to try to explore the uh each cluster group and then uh, explain the those characteristics based on the features or their their patterns of the uh consumings or etc. So and also in my case maybe uh in the urban planning we also thinking about the what kind of a users actually doing uh use during the COVID nineteen for the urban park. So in that case we can also apply to the k-means clustering about the maybe based on the age or maybe based on the their income or based on the their kind of a uh, proximity to the uh, nearest the park and then their mode uh, their mode of the transportation have uh, access to the those park we can actually explain about the group of the people who uses who use the park, urban park for their physical activity during the COVID-19, while they maintaining about the, some physical distances to avoid the, their infection of the COVID-19. And then that is uh, one of the, my research that I published in the journal. So yeah, we can actually apply to the, those things the same way in the, in the urban planning things. Like a business area, customer segmentation analysis is also another way. And then uh, that per customer segmentation analysis also can be employed to the when we categorizing about the user, park, park users, depending during the COVID-19 situation and then what's the differences before and during the COVID-19 in terms of the park users. Those are the kind of interesting to see about that. Uh, in the urban planning, and then that actually allows us about the, how we can uh, uh, design or redesign the park for the better better uses during the COVID-19 or how we can prevent the infections and then and then providing the some of the uh, physical activity in the park. So, so anyway, yeah, there is a very interesting things and that there is a lot of uh, barriers, variation that we can use to the these kind of a K means clustering approaches. So anyway, so 2.5 is actually give us kind of an example about the how we can cluster in the digit number. And then personally I don't like this kind of an example because in here with as you can see here, when you're looking at the, this kind of a clustering result, actually the actually result by itself is the sometimes Maybe six and six and nine is a very different shape, but the thing is in the in the K means clustering, their shape is a pretty sometimes they actually clustering uh clustering together because of the their shape or something. So or sometimes when you're looking at the, these two numbers like a one and one in this case, actually these two cases actually represents one. But the thing is the uh, uh clustering K means clustering tends to be uh separate these two shapes as a uh, different clusters. 
So that means the cluster, k-means clustering analysis does not work very well when it comes to the, this kind of a, uh, digiting identification kind of a process compared to the deep neural network that we learned in the previous chapters. So actually, this one just shows up so about the, okay, we can actually use the, this kind of a clustering things. And then uh, this one can actually get us about the similarity to the shape or et cetera. So, but still, as you can see here, there is a, a lot of us, a lot of uh, high correlation things across the, these kind of matrices. That means that there is a lot of, uh, uh, likely to, uh, misclassify some, some digit number based on the, based on the, when we using the this kind of k-means clustering, but anyway, so that's the thing. And then the two point uh twenty point six is a kind of okay now. If we have a prior knowledge of the uh, how many clusters we are gonna use, it is okay to use that k that number as a k. But the thing is, what if we don't know anything about the how many clusters are there? Are they? there in our data set. In my case about the, in my park use data set, I have no idea about the, how I can categorize about the users. If that's the cases, like a K is unknown. In that cases, we had to use about the, we still apply to the prior knowledge. Maybe we, I can think about the classifying the age or income, but still we, we are not sure about the, that kind of a classification. K value cannot be give us the optimized clustering result. In that cases, we can use about the some of the what is called the, uh more like a natural distinctions groups by using the some of the model uh, statistical techniques like a elbow method that what we actually use for the some of the PCA analysis in the previous chapter. So we just, uh, what we can do is uh, we just uh, try to iterating about the uh, number of a cluster, like a K is one, two, three, et cetera, or 20, or maybe more, depending on the data set. And then we keep calculating about the within cluster of the squares. And then we can, after that, we can try the, try cluster K when K is two and K is three, et cetera. We keep iterating this process, and then we when we get when we can calculate about the within cluster sum of the squares, and then we can get the, this kind of a, a clustering result. X is the number of a cluster K is increases, and then Y axis actually represents about the total within sum of the squares, right? But in here, it says about the elbow appears to the happen to the when k is five. But my my observation is, yeah, it is true that because uh, when we looking at the this kind of elbow, like uh, when the when uh when the k is five, the elbow is kind of happen like this, and then here like this. But but the thing is personally, I personally think that the uh, when we actually looking at the uh elbow at the same time the uh minimum uh total within number of uh, uh square, maybe thirteen gonna be the another number we can also check out, cause uh when before before number thirteen and the before uh, after the number uh number of class is the thirteen, so that means. When we set up the number of cluster more than 13, actually there is a no, uh, not, not too much change, change in the, the, uh, in the within cluster sum of the square. Cause it, all of, after, after number 13, like a cluster 13, like a number of cluster 14, 15, and then 25, there is a, uh, actually, the WSS value is not changed too much compared to the uh one to compared to the before the thirteen, 
So, so that means maybe we can also thinking about the number 13 going to be the another number of a possible way of the cluster we can look at. So in that case, is we can actually conduct into the cluster five when we have a, cluster, num a number of a cluster is five and 13. And then we can do the both and then try to understand about the which which, num which number of a cluster going to be tell us more insight in terms of the in terms of the research or analysis purposes. So what do you think about this? Because I also think that the number 13 is another possible number of a cluster rather than the five. Do you have any idea or any other opinion about this? Uh, Kianto, I think the answer is in that, uh, you know, you know uh, paragraph at the end. Uh, uh -huh. that it says in most applications, oh. it suffices to choose K uh -huh. based on convenience mm -hmm. rather than strict performance requirements. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. both of them could give you uh, mm -hmm. different answers mm -hmm. for different scenarios. So going back yeah, to the customer, right. to the customer segmentation, yeah. clearly yeah. it's easier to explain five clusters mm -hmm. than 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so the, depending on your audience, depending on mm -hmm. what what kind of message you want to transmit, maybe mm -hmm. five will be uh, uh, easy easier to explain and to transmit the message. Mm -hmm. Hey, we have five different clusters that means this kind of patterns interpretations. Way easier than mm -hmm. try to you know explain thirteen. But if we have an audience that is pretty savvy technically and all that, then maybe 13 won't be, you know, too 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 big of a you know of a of yeah, a job. Too many. Yeah, right. right. Uh, exactly. So and yeah. then you can you can you know set up some visualizations that you can segment mm -hmm. those 13 maybe into mm -hmm. two or three different groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking about how you communicate uh, your results. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's okay. Uh, and that's the the uh, the essence of this because I mean you can do all this analysis right but if you cannot communicate mm -hmm. and convince someone of your thesis then you know your mm -hmm. work will be devalued right okay mm -hmm. all those hours spent right uh so mm -hmm. uh that that's what the author says you know it's based mostly on convenience and also on who you want to convince with with this data Okay, so this is a kind of a mirror of how we can communicate or deliver it over your result. And also depending on the, your audience or research context gonna be really matters about the, how we can define the K function. So actually, actually in this case, there is a, actually no right answers. That's the best yeah. way we can that's express, right, but yeah. at least we can, yeah, at least we can actually thinking about the number five and number 13 gonna be the possible way to the thinking about the number of clustering we can uh, uh we can explore for our data sets so but anyway yeah you are right because uh, it's a matter of uh, communication and then how we can deliver right. of our research under the our maybe research purposes or research context or background or some of the audiences, depending on the, our audiences. Maybe if I our, our audiences is kind of a, just kind of a normal citizens, in mm -hmm. this case, maybe we have to explain our result as simple as possible. Right. Maybe if we talk to the maybe academia, like uh, professors mm -hmm. or some of the experts, they want to right. more, they want to understand more detail about the, each of the users. So Correct. in that case, maybe more detailed approaches about the clustering, more number of clusters gonna be necessary, might be necessary. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, and, and also okay. I also want to add that this is only one method, mm -hmm. you know, the elbow method, which is not very yeah. you know, uh it can mm -hmm. it can it can go yeah. one way or the other. But the yeah, author right. also mentioned other methods that you can use to validate your results. Yeah, right. Like the silhouette yeah, and the right. gap statistic. Okay. Yeah. So you can run all yeah, those right, three right. 
and get more information yeah. about what is the optimal, you know, uh, number yeah, of clusters. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. So, so that's the thing. And then, okay, now the next section is the okay about the clustering, the mixed data. So. Actually, in the previous chapter, we actually uh, analyzed about the numeric data set, but most of the, our data set actually com, uh, consists of the mix of the various data type, like uh, factors or numeric or ordinary variable. In that case, we have to think about the, how we can cluster in those things together, right? One way we can do is the what is called the uh, converting the all ordinal and categorical variable to the numeric to the hot code for the remaining nominal variable. So we just uh, converting the all of the categorical variable into the numeric variable, and then we can calculating those things about the uh, like uh, by the elbow method. But the thing is, as you can see here, this one does not clearly see. Um, uh, represents about the when we what is the k value would be okay so in these cases maybe we can also use the what is called the Gower distance method measure this one actually have a kind of a in case of the quantitative kind of things we can actually do the Manhattan distance method in case of the ordinal we actually have a ranked rank them first and then Manhattan distance gonna be used like a difference of the distances, and then nominal. In this is the nominal. In this case, we can actually categorize converting into the sum of the binary column, and then what is called the dice coefficients gonna be used in this case. So, for example, like a computing the dice metric for the two observations, like a x and y, in this case. These are the two observations, our data. And then and then we actually try to hard encoding to the categorical variable like this. Uh, A is the both are the one, B is the X is one, Y is the zero, C is the X is zero, Y is the one, and then D is the all both are the all zero. So we can actually thinking about the number of cases we can combine about the X and Y kind of a nominal kind of a variable things. And then, and then based on the, this kind of outcome, we can actually calculating about the, this, what is called the dice coefficients based on the, these outcomes, like a 2A plus B plus C, uh, and then 2A, 2A divided by 2A plus B plus C. This is a kind of a formula we can use for the, for the, what is called the dice coefficients in this case. And then we can also using the alternative participating, uh, participating method because uh, everything about the k-means clustering is about the, how we can define the k-cluster and then uh, based, based, on the, based on that, how we can try to divide in our observation based on the that k values. So there is a, a lot of our alternative pass, uh, partitioning method, like uh, partitioning around the medians, which is the PEM method. That means rather than using the median, we have to use uh, we are uh, mean. We have to use the median value to reduce the effect of the outliers. Okay, because uh, when we try to calculating the our uh define the cluster based on the Euclidean distance measure. Euclidean distance measure is the very sensitive to the outliers. So to prevent to the effect of the outliers, we can also thinking about the using the median value rather than the mean value. That is the what is called the participate partitioning around the median method, like a PEM method. Okay. And then Another one we can also using is what is called the clustering large application, like a Clara method. This one is the actually same algorithm for the for the PEM, but instead of the finding the medoid, which is the median one, we actually this one actually considered about the small sample size. Okay, 
like a, a like a try to get the, as a small kind of a clustering sample with clustering with a small sample size as possible, and then uh, that actually allows us to the optimizing the clustering result. But this one is also kind of a little bit danger about the about the overfeeding problem because as we looking at the previous chapter, it also says that about the when we increase the number of clusters that actually have the in danger of the overfeeding problem. If we have a too small k clustering value, that actually allows us to the uh that actually have a difficult thing about the understanding about the what this cluster is about okay that's the kind of a problem because that means if we have a small smaller k value that means that there is a high variations within the cluster within the among the observation within the cluster if we have a too many clusters that means we can have a very uh we we have a in danger of the overflow overfeeding problem. That means there is a too small variation, but at the same time, we it is very hard for us to understand about the what the cluster is about for the each things. Uh I think that this is it. And then and then next the two chapter is the kind of uh, analyzing the more in-depth kind of approaches about the, how we can define the cluster and then how we can understand the, those kind of a clustering uh, clustering result. So I think that this is it. And then k-means clustering is a just kind of a very basic introduction about the clustering method as a, one of the supervi supervised machine learning techniques. So, so I think that this is it. And then uh, do you have any questions so far? Anything? No, we're good. <laughs> okay, so we good, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Can, I don't okay. know if we have time. Maybe this ten minutes discuss with me the our next book. Because what was uh -huh. the the key uh, question? Yeah. yeah. Uh actually we the last time I actually raised the uh, some of the suggestion about the maybe what kind of a uh, machine learning book we want we write to learn maybe after this book so actually you two <coughs> you two suggest you two suggested such a very good great book and then i really like those book and then i just kind of wondering which book we gonna try to oh. try to learn next in the next book club so maybe i think that Okay, hold on. Let me share the this screen shot. So, so yeah, can you see I, the? I, I, I don't. I don't remember yeah, the options. <laughs> yeah, because uh, in here, you you uh, Ricardo, you suggesting about the interpretable machine learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, one other before. Yeah, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's one the angel. So I, I think it's newer. It's a newer version. Of the same topic. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Explainable machine yeah. learning. And also, that. Yeah. And and also yeah, the first one. maybe mm -hmm. yeah. In this in this one, like exploratory model analysis. And then and then uh yeah. So yeah, I think that there is a uh, several options too we can do for the for the things but so what do you think because uh i think that anything will be okay for me personally maybe let's check out the interpret uh <coughs> interpret couple machine learning maybe uh oh not this one okay Yeah, that that's maybe a old interface yeah. to the to interpret uh -huh. machine learning, and it doesn't have code uh -huh. examples. It have a package, but when I check in the chapters, uh -huh. it's 
they are very theoretical. They explain the const uh -huh. the, the 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 concepts, but no, so so that I, I don't see something uh -huh. like code. So you see, yeah, okay. interpretation, explanation, yeah. But they, they don't share code. Uh -huh. So it's like you need uh -huh. to go to the notebook. Yeah, I, I, but but I think there's a GitHub, uh, you know, yeah. uh, related to this. Yeah. Yeah, here. Maybe hold on. Let me check out the dev GitHub. Maybe. Uh, do they have a GitHub website? I think so. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that should work. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Mm. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. let, me, let me check. Yeah. Yeah, this. This is the, this is the, his maybe GitHub, I guess. Our yeah. code in here, hopefully. Yeah. Data manuscript. Yeah. Maybe you can find the chapters. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I this one. See. Oh, not this one. No. Yeah. I think that uh I think that this one this is a because this one is a author's author's GitHub. And then yeah. It might have uh, some of the R code and then uh, some of the some relevant examples and packages and manuscripts and data set, etc. So manuscript yeah. maybe. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, we still have time to talk about this. But I think that this one might be for me, I'm okay with this because I'm actually in you know, academia, so I I usually tend to be more like a theoretical approaches to understand the, these kind of techniques. And then I need to teach the students about the machine learning. To do that, maybe I had to learn more theoretical about the machine learning approaches. So, But I'm not sure about the, what, what you, Ricardo, think about this because, Ricardo, you actually more oriented towards about the practitioner kind of a practical kind of a analysis. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not sure the about this. Yeah, I think yeah I, mm -hmm. the, the, the one that Angel suggested, I think is, is, is a good choice because it is 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 newer. It's, yeah, it's, it's a newer it's, uh, uh, book. The race better with Daddy Mothers. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this one is yeah, a the, 2023. The, the, this almost, this, this yeah. one is more kind of a model like agnostic. So you can apply it to uh -huh. R, Python, you know, or whatever comes in the pipeline. And of course, it's more uh, theoretical okay. in that sense. Oh, uh, okay. I was trying to look at the GitHub of the author, uh, which is uh, Christoph Moller. Okay. Let me see if I can yeah. find it because I, I know that I have. I think I have the gift of my in my uh, uh in my repos. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe let me share his his GitHub in the chat here. 